Hello, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about mitochondria. They are a cell membrane bound organelle found in all, many, many cell types, um, nearly universal. And they're responsible for fundamentally the production of ATP. And for cells, that really means energy. ATP is a uh, chemical that allows us to move, to transport electrons around, to provide energy to the chemical processes within a cell. And there are other interesting facts about a mitochondria that we'll come to later on. Um, in fact, they are probably my favourite organelle for some interesting quirky reasons. But basically their role is to produce ATP. And the fundamental substrate of that, or the requirement for that, is one of the core requirements is oxygen. So in a sense, when you breathe, your breathing is about providing oxygen to mitochondria. And that is distributed through you through the process of your lungs and the red cells in your body. And here's two interesting photographs to show you of mitochondria. The first one, on the, on the left here, on this side here, is um, made in a very interesting way with a scanning electron, micrograph, uh, scanning electron microscope to show you the three-dimensional structure of mitochondria. And you can see them sitting here. They are membrane-bound little packets that have these sort of um, divisions within them, cisternae within them, to divide them up. They are somewhat independent of the rest of the cell mechanism. And just for completeness here, do you notice what we're looking at here? We're looking at rough endoplasmic reticulum here. Can you see all the little ribosomes dotted along the surface of these cell membranes? So these mitochondria are embedded in a mass of rough endoplasmic reticulum. And similarly, with this transmission electron micrograph on the right hand side here, you can see it is a membrane bound organelle, usually about one to five micrometers in diameter. Notice that this is not such a good photograph and in fact it's my fault. I cut the scale bar off this so you actually don't know how large this is. But if I told you this mitochondria is about one micron or two microns in size. And again, you can see these infoldings of the membrane within the mitochondria. Now, inside a mitochondria, there are some complex biochemical processes going on to transport electrons to move it to from to move it to enhance the energy capacity of ADP. In other words, turn it into ATP. And we're not going to go into all of that biochemistry. We just want to see this as an organelle and understand it. Now, at the bottom here, I've written a little note here to remind you all to thank your mum. Your mum is responsible for the mitochondria that you have. Unlike everything else in you, which is derived from your mother and father, your mitochondria are actually from your mother on, their, on her own. And in fact, the thing that I like about mitochondria that always keeps me interested in them is that they have their own sequence of DNA within them. And because mitochondria divide by binary fission, they are binary division, that means there is no um, crossover. And without crossover, what you're getting in their division is the continuance from parent to child, and then from child to grandchild, etc., etc., down the generation. You're getting a continuance of the information within the DNA, 
And the only variation you're seeing from generation to generation is that caused by random mutation. Which is really quite an interesting situation because it means that since we know the rate of random mutation in DNA, we can actually retrospectively calculate and use the DNA of mitochondria to look back at ancestors many, many generations, if not hundreds of generations before. So mitochondrial DNA and mitochondria being semi-independent in their um, genetic origins from the rest of the cell make for very interesting science. Now, how many mitochondria does a cell have? When you actually look at a cell, you see a nucleus and a cell membrane, and then the first thing I look at when I look at an electron micrograph is I actually look for how many mitochondria a cell has. Because the rates of mitochondria, or the numbers per cell, gives you an indication of the energy consumption of that cell. So, you know, for example, liver cells, you know, you can see anything from a thousand plus mitochondria per liver cell because this is a cell of high energy using using a lot of energy and therefore it has a lot of mitochondria. So mitochondria are an excellent mechanism for looking at the energy consumption of a cell. And the other question I'm always asked is how do mitochondria sit distributed in a cell? And that's a really good question. You, you, you should ask that about all, all the organelles of a cell. How do they actually sit where they are? And you know, the, the, the interesting question is, if you go up in a spacecraft into zero gravity, do all your organelles float to a different place in your cell? And the answer is obviously no, that doesn't happen. All organelles in you, in your cells, are actually held in a meshwork of fibres within, within your cells. And this fibre make like a scaffold within your cells. Historically, we might have learned at school that uh, your cells are a bag of water. Well, they're not. They are actually packed with fibres. And the main fibre we talk about is actin. And the other one is microtubule. And these fibres give shape to your cell, give it rigidity. It, they also hold the organelles in specific locations. Now that's quite interesting because some cells you actually find that the nucleus or other organelles move when it changes function. So you actually can understand now that by remodeling these protein fibres if you took all the actin away from this side of the nucleus and you built more on this side, you could actually move the nucleus in this direction within a cell. And remember, this is a three-dimensional scaffold. So please, don't go away thinking that a cell is a bag of water with organelles floating around in it. They're, they are a complex arrangement of fibres holding organelles in exactly the location that they're uh, expected to be in. So to summarise, a mitochondria is responsible for energy production and in the case of cells that is ATP. And that energy production is through the consumption of oxygen and other uh, chemicals. And it happens within the different membrane layers in a complex biochemical pathway to move electrons between atoms. Mitochondria themselves, we, we think their origin may well be an infection and from that we know that mitochondria actually have their own little strips of DNA within them and from that DNA strip makes very interesting science and uh, I'll finish by reminding you, please thank your mum and your mum's mum and your mum's mum's mum because they are the responsible people 
for giving you the mitochondria that you have today.